Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to join you tonight and to share a message in the gospel. It's a cold and rainy night here in Southern New Jersey. We hope wherever you are that uh, you're warm and uh, in good surroundings. And we're just gonna begin tonight by reading one verse from the Gospel of Romans in chapter five. Romans chapter five and verse six. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, if you've ever visited the assembly that I'm part of in Pensacola, New Jersey, you've likely noticed we have a large Bible sign out by the highway that proclaims the last part of this verse, Christ died for the ungodly. And I'd just like to spend some time tonight considering uh, this verse with you and what it means to be without strength. I've been doing a personal study lately of the miracles of the Lord Jesus. And in the gospels, we find uh, three lame men or three palsied men who were healed by the Lord Jesus. And I think just in considering them, we can learn some lessons about what it means to be without strength and can learn some lessons about how the Lord Jesus works in his kindness to bring healing and to bring salvation. And then rather than reading each account of these palsied men, I'm gonna rely on your Bible, your Sunday school knowledge, and just point out some details about these men to you this evening. The first man was uh, a palsied man with a master, with an, an advocate. And you can read about him in Matthew chapter 8 and in Luke chapter 7. This event occurred in Capernaum. Many feel that Capernaum was the hometown of the Lord Jesus um, as an adult man. And so the Lord Jesus came into Capernaum and Matthew tells us about a centurion, a Roman man, who came to him seeking his help for his servant. And he said that his servant was grievously tormented in bed, sick with a palsy. Uh, Luke tells us that he was near to death. And Luke also tells us that this servant was dear to his master, to the centurion. Now, we don't know why. This man was palsied, why he was lame. to be in his service to the centurion. He had been run over by a cart or injured in some way, but his situation was very clear. He was in a lot of pain, death was coming, and he was in a terrible place. But he had this man, his master, this centurion, who came to the Lord Jesus and sought that the Lord Jesus would heal his servant. And the Lord responded to him, and said he would come to the man's home, but the centurion said something remarkable. He, he, he explained to the Lord that he was a man of authority. He was accustomed to giving directions and having them obeyed. He recognized the authority of the Lord Jesus and said, there's no need for you to come to my home. I'm not worthy for you to come to my home, but if you will just say the word, I know that my servant will be healed. And the Lord Jesus marveled at the faith of this man and told him to go his way. His servant was healed. Now, there are two things that stand out to me in this miracle that I would like to emphasize to you. The first is that in his palsy, in his paralysis, this man was grievously tormented. And I'd like to consider this palsy as a picture of sin because sin brings suffering. There's lots of suffering around us in the world today. And wherever you are, whatever town you're living in, you probably don't need to drive too far until you could come to an area where there are people addicted to drugs, living out in tents in the cold, in the rain. And it is evident that the effects of sin in their lives are leading to their torment, are leading to suffering. There's other hospitals that we could enter in tonight. And there's people suffering because of the effects of sin. Have you considered the effect of sin in your life? You may be comfortable in your home. You may have had plenty to eat today, but that does not mean that sin is not having an effect in your life. Sin brings suffering. Ultimately, sin brings death and judgment. 
the effects of sin are very serious. And so it is very important in the gospel that we present to you the seriousness of your sin. This man, because of his palsy, was grievously tormented. The other thing that stands out is he was healed from a distance. Now they were in the same city. And I think Luke even suggests that they were coming close to the man's home. But the Lord Jesus didn't need to enter in the home. He didn't need to enter into the room. He was able to heal from a distance. We see this again once in the Gospel of John. The Lord healed the nobleman's son. He was likely at least 22 miles away when he healed that man's son. And we would like to point out to you this evening that we have the confidence that the Lord Jesus can heal you where you are. In a sense, he's far away. He has risen from the dead. He has ascended to heaven. He is at the right hand of the throne of God this evening. That seems very far away from where you and I are tonight. But the wonderful message of the gospel is this is the Savior who has the power to draw near and to save. This man sick with the palsy had no ability to come to the Lord Jesus on his own. His condition was so terrible that he was confined to his bed. And yet there was someone else who was an advocate for him, who came to the Savior for him. Have you considered that perhaps someone has been an advocate for you today, that your name has been mentioned in the presence of the Lord Jesus, that someone has asked for your salvation? That's why believers hold prayer meetings. That's why parents pray for their children. For years, they are asking the Lord Jesus to do what they cannot do to save. And so this man, grievously tormented, was delivered at that same hour. He was healed at the the gates of death. He turned back and he enjoyed life because of the work of the Lord Jesus. There's another very famous story about a palsied, about a lame man. And you can read about this in Matthew chapter 9. And most famously in Luke chapter 2, or in Mark chapter 2, and also in Luke chapter 5. The description was that this man, sick with the palsy, was carried by four of his friends. He was a man with friends. And you remember what happened. It was noised, it was talked about, that the Lord Jesus was in a home in Capernaum. But when these friends brought the man with palsy to the Lord Jesus, they couldn't get in. They couldn't even get to the door. And so they went up to the roof and they opened up a way and they let the man down in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an amazing story. And especially for younger ones, it always captures our attention to think about the roof being opened up and this man being let down. And we would like to emphasize to you this evening that what is impossible that your soul should be saved has been made possible because of the Lord Jesus Christ. A way of salvation has been opened up. It has come from above. In that day, the the ceiling was opened up so that we might be saved. Heaven itself has opened. The Lord Jesus Christ was sent to earth as a man to die on the cross to make salvation possible. And the message of the gospel is this, salvation is possible because of the Lord Jesus Christ. So on that day, The man was let down. And what stands out in the story is that the Lord did not heal the man of his palsy first. But the first thing he did when he saw their faith was he said, son, thy sins are forgiven you. And you likely know the story. All the important people, the religious leaders in the room began to think within themselves. They didn't dare to say it out loud. They thought within themselves. Who does he think he is? To forgive sins. And of course, the Lord Jesus, being the Son of God, knew their thoughts and responded to them and said, So that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. And then he turned to the palsied man and he said, Son, I say to thee, take up thy bed and walk. What was happening was the Lord Jesus was using a miracle to give visual proof to those people that he indeed had the power to forgive sins. And on that day, the man who had no room to enter 
into the house, stood up and carried his bed and a way opened up and he walked out of that home carrying his bed because the Lord Jesus was at work. The first man was unable to come to the Lord Jesus on his own. So another came into the presence of the Lord Jesus for him. The second man required the help of friends who brought him along to the Lord Jesus. I don't know all who are listening this evening or how you've come upon this meeting. Perhaps your parents have told you, sit here and watch this. Perhaps someone has emailed you an invitation. But in a way, you've been brought here by friends. Not to learn from me, but to learn from the word of God. Will you be blessed by the Lord Jesus this evening? Will you receive the blessing that he can accomplish for you this evening? And consider the lesson of this story. The greatest thing that you could receive is not money in your bank account, is not some miracle in your life, but is the miracle of the forgiveness of sins, the salvation of your soul. There is only one person who can accomplish that. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. But it is vitally important that you realize that the problem of sin is your problem. Have you ever awoken to that fact that you have sins that require forgiveness, that you must be saved? Now, I work in a family practice, but about one day a week during COVID, I have been helping at a drive-up test facility. And uh, so the rapid tests are run, and I go out to the cars and I explain people's results to them. Thankfully, at our testing center, the percentage of people who come up positive is quite low, likely under 5%. But it is interesting to go and explain the results to people. Most people who are positive for COVID have already been considering it. They, are, they have uh, resigned themselves to the diagnosis. And they say something like, I was worried that I had COVID. I, I thought I probably was positive. But what is very interesting is on certain occasions, there is a person I am telling that they are positive for COVID, but they have a friend who has chosen to drive them to the testing facility. And as I am telling the patient that they are positive, I can't help but notice the reaction on the face of the friend or family member who drove them there. Many of them go absolutely white because they stop thinking about the person they were just being kind to, and they think about themselves. And they will often interrupt and say, well, does that mean I've been exposed? Does that mean I need to be tested for COVID? And I have to tell them the truth and say, yes, you have been exposed. You have been in this car with this person who is positive for COVID-19. What has happened? What to them was somebody else's problem suddenly has become their problem, and it has hit home in all its reality, unexpectedly. When has sin become your problem? When have you faced before God the truth of the word of God that we are without strength to come to God? We are without strength to obtain salvation. We are without strength to get to heaven because we are sinners. I hope tonight that you will face the reality of your sin. There's a third man that we learn about in the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was lame, who was palsied. And we learn about him in the Gospel of John and chapter five. It's one of the great sign miracles of the Gospel of John. This man lived just outside the temple. Near to the temple, there was a gate to the city called the Sheep Gate. And by the sheep gate, there was a pool of water called Bethesda for all the sacrifices in the temple. It was necessary that the sheep were brought in and were given water before being taken for the purpose of sacrifices. And by that pool of water were a great company of people with all types of infirmities. And when you read in John chapter five, there's this very uh, striking um, thought put forth that this man was holding on to a myth. He had this idea in his mind and nowhere else in scripture 
Do we have any indication of this to think that this was a real thing, that this was anything more than a myth? But he was holding on to this idea that once a year, an angel would come and touch the waters of that pool of Bethesda, and that the first person to enter the waters would be healed. But he had a problem. He was paralyzed. He had no power to get into the water. If it was true, certainly a blind man would stumble in first. A leprous man would dive into the water. A man who was deaf would race past him. He had a myth that was an impossibility. He was so close to the temple, and yet none of the priests could ever help him. In fact, there's some suggestion in archaeological diggings in that area that there was a covered walkway up above this pool. It was as if the priests, they didn't want to be bothered having to walk by these people they couldn't help, that they just passed over top of them. And friend, tonight, it is a great picture of religion. Religion cannot save you. Religion cannot take away your sin. Only the Lord Jesus can save. And religion has left so many people tangled up in myths, in falsehoods, hoping for salvation, but leaving it as an impossibility. And so that man had lain there for 38 years, longer than the Lord Jesus had been alive. When Mary and Joseph brought the Lord Jesus as a newborn baby for the dedication, that man was laying by that pool. Amazing to consider. And yet on this day, as the man continued to look at the waters after 38 years, the Lord Jesus came to him and asked him if he wanted to be healed. And the man talked to the Lord Jesus about the myth, about his need to get into the water, not realizing that the means of his healing were standing right next to him. And the Lord healed him that, that day. And he walked away with his bed because the Lord had come. The first man had no ability to come to the Lord Jesus. He was grievously tormented in his bed. The second man had to be brought by his friends. The third man was all alone. But how kind the Lord Jesus was to come right beside him and to offer him salvation and to heal him that is the savior that we present to you this evening the savior who seeks to come to you wherever you are this evening and if you would take your place as a helpless sinner he would love to heal you the verse says for when we were yet without strength when we were just like these lame palsied men with no ability to help ourselves in due time at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Salvation is possible, not because of religion. Salvation is possible, not because of anything you can do. Salvation is possible because of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is strong to save. And from far away, from heaven, he could give you salvation this evening. He could forgive your sins just as he did for that man who came to, through the roof of that house in Capernaum. He could give you strength and tell you to rise up and walk as a newly saved believer. You could be saved because at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. In the Old Testament, I'm not aware of any account of a lame or palsied man being healed. If you think of one that I've forgotten, please send me an email to correct me. But there is a very famous man in the Old Testament who we are told was lame on both his feet. It's a name that's hard to pronounce and hard to spell, Mephibosheth. And you remember him. He was of the line um, of Saul, related to Jonathan. And David wanted to show mercy to the house of Jonathan. This was very unusual. Because in those days, when a new king took power, his first order was to kill off the previous family so that he would have no rival for his seat. But David had a different thought in mind. He wanted to show mercy. So he found Mephibosheth. He welcomed him into his home, into his capital city. He gave him a place at his table. He fed him and provided for him. It's a beautiful sound 
picture of salvation and of the mercy of God to us. We were in the place of weakness, in the place where only death was expected. But salvation and the message of the gospel is a glorious invitation inviting you to come into all the blessings that are available through the Lord Jesus Christ. David could not heal Mephibosheth, but he could welcome him at his table. The Lord Jesus Christ can heal you, can make you a member of the family of God, can give you a place in heaven, can provide for you, can sustain you. So listen one more time to the wonderful words of the book of Romans. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. There are just these three lame men specifically that we know of that were healed by the Lord Jesus Christ. But in heaven, there will be millions who will point to him and say, when I was just a sinner, when I was without strength, I can came to understand that he was the one who died for me. I am in heaven today because of his strength, because of his sacrifice, because of his death at the cross of Calvary. That salvation and that savior is offered to you this evening. People have prayed for you that you would come to know him. Perhaps some have invited you to the meeting so that you might hear about him. He is the savior who desires to come near to you this evening and you could be saved because Christ died for the ungodly. Thanks for your attention.